welcome back to another video with the chocolate dogs thanks for tuning in you know before we start i have to ask how are you doing today have you looked in the mirror and told yourself that you are beautiful that you are worthy that you are competent if not stop this video go ahead and do that and then come back and we can get started yes so in this video we're gonna be talking about what we wish we would have known prior to starting fourth year mm -hmm. um but fourth year is basically a time where we're told that it's gonna be easy breezy beautiful Chill. but you know there's some hiccups along the way before you get to that part and i wish I would have known some things. She wished she would have known some things. So we're gonna be telling you guys all about that. So let's just hop into this video. So for our medical school, we have four required rotations at mm -hmm. birth three. Four, but one of them is like is after match. Oh, at, oh, the transition, the transition okay, to so residency. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> I get that. Residency. So there's four required rotations. Yeah. It's critical care. Um, it's ambulatory medicine, which is basically outpatient in the clinic. Mm -hmm. And then, what was the third one? The sub eye? Your sub eye. Which is basically like where you're acting as an intern yeah. for your, your specialty that you're going into. Yeah. And then transition to the residency. So yeah. that's the four required that we have to do for our program. And then, because like COVID kind of changed our schedule, mm -hmm. we only had to do four electives instead of seven. Um, so those four electives can be in things that you're pursuing, like specialty mm -hmm. wise. It can be not in your specialty. I think only three of ours could be in our specialty, and then one had to be non specialty related, mm -hmm. but it can literally be anything. So, like, when people People used to travel for interviews like they would make sure that they choose like you know easier electives for when they're interviewing or just things that like they wish they could they got exposure to mm -hmm. during the clerkships but didn't get to um so you can really make your fourth year whatever you want outside of those required um those requirements i didn't realize it was 07 it used to be seven <laughs> mm -hmm. it was a lot it was a um lot. so i guess we can talk about what we're doing like what we did for the other uh, electives that we chose outside of the required ones I actually did, so my specialty that I had to do, we didn't have a sub I like elective or rotation. So I did my sub I in like internal medicine and, or like, yeah, it was like neurology console or something like that. It was very, it was a very chill rotation. And then I actually had an elective in my specialty. Little and hints. We need little hints about <laughs> what we're going into. Oh, yeah. Little by little. Yeah. So, you know now I'm not doing internal medicine. <laughs> but um, essentially, and then right now I'm, in, I'm on my neuroradiology rotation, which is basically like super chill. I'm actually at home yeah. <laughs> enjoying life. And yeah, yeah, the good thing that, like, I mean, the good thing about. <laughs> COVID for us is like some electives that like really didn't require you to show up that mm -hmm. much like now we don't have to show up at all right so it's all virtual so we right. don't have to do all these electives online uh, most of my electives actually all my electives are in person because mm -hmm. I have to be in person to do mine right. <laughs> but there's there's other electives that like give you the luxury of being at home still learning but you're able to like be in the comfort of your own home which has been really right. nice so yeah and then the other two electives I would do it I was doing research um, and so that was basically how I kind of divvy up, yeah. divvied up my time. And so for real, for real, I'll be doing fourth year, January 8th. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on vacation right now. Mm -hmm. And then I have one more elective and I'm done. I was going to do like a health policy elective, but I'm chilling y'all. Like yeah. I just want to enjoy the rest of this. And then I'll probably like shadow and like take yeah, call with some people. OR, yeah. yeah. But like required stuff i'll be done at the end of january so it's nice yeah for now i think honestly like we're in the latter half of the fourth year portion where we're like chilling yeah. but in the very beginning but that's where what they don't tell you <laughs> about fourth year comes into play yeah like just the stress and the thing is, like, it's stressful for us for different reasons mm -hmm. because of, like, COVID and how that impacted us. But just, like, in general, the beginning of fourth year is so stressful because if we would have done away rotations, that would have been the time that you're doing your away rotations, the time where you're taking step two, yeah. the time where you're like preparing for your ERAS application and submitting your ERAS application and trying mm -hmm. to get letters, trying to write your personal statement, mm -hmm. trying to fill out the application, trying to get your CV together. Like mm -hmm. that is where like that summer is like where everything yeah, happens. And so literally people, I know last year people were doing a ways up to like, well, what, while they submitted ERAS. Mm -hmm. And so ERAS got pushed back for mm -hmm. us like a month, a month and a half. But like that period, I would say like the end of third year. So like it would have been May for us to like okay. when you submit ERAS, like that's a very stressful, yeah. <laughs> that's a very stressful time period because you have away rotations. Mm -hmm. You're getting ready for ERAS. You're trying to do your sub eyes mm -hmm. and get letters from your sub eyes. Like it's stressful. So when people say that fourth year is chill, it's true after, 
honestly, it's straight after you match. Yeah, <laughs> like, honestly. after you match, then it's chill. Because even, like, after you submit ERAS, like, you're still interviewing. And for us, it's virtual. But, like, you will be traveling for interviews. And just even virtually. Like, this is tiring, y'all. Like, doing yeah. these virtual interviews is actually, I have to teach. <laughs> like, it's tiring. Like, at the end of the day, you're just like, oh, You want to take a nap. You just want to chill. Because it's so tiring. talking about yourself, on average, you have three to four interviews a day. And even then you more. have Zoom fatigue is real. Just, y'all, we, you all know it because you're probably looking at lectures a lot yeah. and like everything's virtual it's just talking being active yeah. for and like being five engaging. hours and engaging for five hours at a time that is its own level of fatigue it's obviously it's not as bad as like traveling and yeah. airports and all that other stuff but, but it has it's its still, own it's own different thing. it's, it's yeah. different <laughs> but it still makes you tired and so like dealing with all of that mm-hmm. and then like then the stress of making your rank list honey so like and not knowing where you're gonna end up yeah, um, it's so, like anxiety inducing. Yeah. yeah, so it's a different type of stress fourth year, but it's good stress because you know in the end it's going to be worth it, and in the end you'll have a job finally. <laughs> so it's nice. Yeah, it's a bigger um, job. Yes. But yeah, so the beginning, I feel like what you need to know that we mm. didn't know about fourth year is that the beginning is not going to be easy at all. Honestly, until you match, it's going to be stressful in some some capacity. Some sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I know a lot of some other schools don't even have like critical care, or they don't have like mm-hmm. clinic or whatever, and it's like. For us, critical care for me, it was a chiller rotation as far as like hours wise, but it still was like I was as if I was a third year again, yeah. taking, um, you know, pre running on my patient, getting there early, mm-hmm. presenting my patient, then going home. Obviously, because you're a fourth year, you've done yeah. all of third year. It's like a breeze yeah. to a certain degree, but just the hours, having to wake That's up and like having to do all that. And again. when you've chosen your specialty, yeah, and you're, it's harder. And I'm sorry, like when you know what you want to do and like whatever you're doing has nothing, nothing to, to do with do. that field, it's harder. <laughs> like, because so at that point, harder. like you fell in love with the specialty that you want to do, like you're excited about yeah. that. And so to do anything else is like, ugh. Yeah. Yes. Like, it's, it's like if, let's say that you wanted to do surgery and your and clinic is in family medicine it's going to be very hard for you to stay engaged for a mm-hmm. month <laughs> like yeah. it's possible it's doable it's what you have to do to graduate mm-hmm. but it's like it's oh lord like i don't really yeah. want to do this in real life so why am i here doing this that's how a lot of people perspective is yeah. during fourth year and i mean of course you can learn from every rotation oh, but it's like for sure. <laughs> it's like if i could choose <laughs> i would, I would so more. Nice. yeah that's basically what yeah so that's pretty much um, like how what I didn't know about fourth year was that basically that initial part of like all the stress, yeah. getting everything together is definitely like very stressful. And for us now, even though we didn't have weight rotations, just trying to figure out what we're gonna put in your personal day to make you stand out amongst other candidates yeah. that are that are also strong. Um, getting your CV together. The ERAS application is very underwhelming to it's me. It's very simple. It's very it's simple. It's not like applying to med school. <laughs> like, it's not as detailed, which no. kind of makes it stressful because it's like you wish you could just have like boxes where you like fill in information and mm-hmm. you have boxes, but they're not as detailed yeah. as like the MCAT. So it's basically like, that's why, I think we've said this before, but making sure like your CV is up to date and that you like constantly update mm-hmm. your CV throughout medical school is going to help you so much yeah. when it comes to applying for residency. Because literally, it's just your CV. Right, it is. Like that's what the ERAS application it is, your CV. Is. So if you is. keep up with that, if you keep all, up with all the research, all the volunteer work that you've been doing, when you apply for residency, it it's going to be it so easy. Be. It should, you, to be honest, base. ERAS should not be the, like the stressor of your mm-hmm. life. It really shouldn't. It should be like submitting and yeah. the anxiety around Getting that. Getting your letters. Yeah. Like, trying to like finish up research projects here and there. Yeah. Um, just trying to like put your best foot forward on your sub eyes. Like yeah. that's really the stressful thing about fourth year. Mm-hmm. And then like for us, it was, we just had our own set of challenges because of COVID. So it's like, okay, like how, like she said, like how do I make myself stand out when I'm not able to do that in the rotation when mm-hmm. I haven't been able to meet you? Like how am I going to like navigate that process? And then for you guys or whenever things are not virtual right. <laughs> anymore, it's going to be like, okay, like how am I going to travel from this place to this place? Where am I going to stay for my way rotations? Like, you know, like it's just going to be a different type of stress. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be more expensive for you guys. So mm-hmm. what they don't tell you about fourth year and what we would have had to go through was just how expensive it is. Mm-hmm. So looking at it now, depending on how many interviews you get, you have to pay for flights. You may get those interview invitations late or like a day or two before that actual interview. So you have to pay for flights a couple of days in advance, which you know is expensive. You have to pay for your housing 
whether you're lodging there, so whether that's a hotel, or Airbnb, if you don't know anybody who stays in that area, if you need a car to travel back and forth from the hospital, if you air like a uh, Uber or whatever, mm, like food. you have the food, <laughs> like you have to take all those things in, into consideration. Per school, per school, and so when I was talking to other people, they were saying that they probably spent about ten thousand dollars during imagine? energy season for all of that. Imagine. That's a lot, y'all. We just so, have to submit. We, yeah. have to, we have to just send it for you guys. That's all we have And to that's do. expensive too. So that's another thing. <laughs> Applying for residency is expensive. Like just the ERAS application, depending. So it based, it's based off of how many schools you apply mm-hmm. to. Um, we'll tell you how many we apply to and all that other stuff later. But like I applied to a good amount <laughs> and I spent, I spent point. So I spent like, how much did I spend? Like $1,500, $1,600? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spent like $1,500, $1,600 on my application and yeah. people spend a lot more depending on how many <laughs> schools you apply to. Yeah. So yeah. For sure. And then you have to apply for to to sign up for the match, the NRMP, you get to pay a fee for that. Mm-hmm. You get to pay for your transcripts. You have to pay for all these random little tidbits here and there yeah. that you're I'm hoping your student affairs office will like have all of that yeah. in one place for you to just They did great for us. Like there was an email yeah. that had everything we needed to do and I was like bet because I didn't know how to do this stuff, so. <laughs> at all. <laughs> But yeah, so all like of course like there's gonna be expenses that you don't know about until you get into that position. But just be prepared because yeah. we told you so now you know. <laughs> just be um, prepared to spend money during fourth year, like a yeah. lot of money, um, especially if you're going into a competitive specialty. Yes. So like I know primary care in, in past years they would pay for your hotel mm-hmm. depending on where area of the country you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, but other places they're very like no, you gotta do it on your own. If you're not going into, I feel like I've only heard that it's mostly with family medicine. Also, peds occasionally, mm-hmm. but mostly just with family medicine, where, where they like have more incentives for you yeah. to like come and interview with them in terms of like financial incentives. Right. But for all these other specialties, honey, especially the competitive ones, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's in the same boat, so you gotta like take out loans or ask for financial help from your parents, friends, yeah. whatever the case may be, and so. That's just the reality of me- medicine in general. It's mm-hmm. actually very expensive. It sucks. <laughs> like, if you're right. in the midst of, like, if you're a second year watching or third year watching this, still, start saving now. There's still some coins you gotta Honestly, you know, like, start saving up. now. <laughs> it's ridiculous how expensive it is. Because, mm-hmm. um, of course, it puts people at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. But just like, we, we're telling you now. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> when, things, when things go back to normal, hopefully, it's my hope that people, that some programs keep the option to do virtual interviews if, like, you are unable to come and, like, mm-hmm. interview with them in person. I don't know how that's going to work because that can also put you at a disadvantage. But I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but hopefully virtual interviews become some type of, like, component of it just because it is a lot more feasible. Um, but and yeah, cost effective. and cost effective, but just like as our advice right now, just save, yeah. save now for fourth year because yeah. it is expensive. And of course, like as far as our situation, which is very unique, we were all distressed about how COVID was going to affect us as far as getting interview invites and matching. And so that added its own level of stress yeah. for, some, some, for some med students. Mm-hmm. And so taking that into account, fourth year has definitely been a whirlwind of emotions, good and bad. Yeah. Good because we know that we're at like the final stretch. Yeah, of some studying thing. for like medical school but we're gonna enter this new phase like the light at the end of the tunnel is like right there you know it's just yeah. it's just it's really <laughs> like the fact that we're wrapping up 2020 and like we're about to be doctors in literally less than five months that's crazy it's insane guys it's crazy <laughs> but we're gonna get through it you know we're going to do well we're gonna strive for the best and we're gonna mm-hmm. thrive in whatever environment that god places us in but we have Amen. to believe that and that's just gonna be what it is that's what it is so hopefully you guys like learned something from this video. Yeah. Hopefully um, you collected some gems and don't make the same mistakes we did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a friend if I was here. Yes. Oh, we have a giveaway. Yes. This is our last giveaway of the month, of the year, of whatever. 2020 just throw it away, child. Well, we are giving away a little, um, what's it A called? basket. So a we have a basket, basket of, like, spa things. So it's like I sell, this is our self-care theme. Yes. Um, and so we have a basket with a whole bunch of goodies, face masks, um, body wash, mm-hmm. bombs, like, things to take care of yourself. Yes. Um, and so we'll be giving that away. Yeah. Guys. So we will see you in our next. Wait, hold on. Next year. Next year. (laughs) Our next video will be in 2021. Hopefully, you guys had an amazing holiday season and you've offered all the winners in the past. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying your gifts. 
Um, but yeah, we hope 2021 treats us a lot better than 2020 oh, did. Please, in Jesus' name. Stay safe, y'all. Bye. Bye.